colleague in the Senate, Senator Blumenthal, and my former colleagues in the House, uh, Congressman Papuano and Congresswoman Eshoo. Uh, the Supreme Court has given corporations the power to influence elections by ruling that corporations are people. And any money they spend in support of a candidate falls under the category of free speech. With this decision, big oil and big business, and even foreign corporations with foreign government control have undue influence over the electoral process. With this decision, big business has an ability to funnel millions of dollars into our elections uh, without any real knowledge as to who these individuals are. A corporation's money <clears throat> really belongs to the shareholders, not the executives, and those shareholders deserve a voice if their money is going to be spent on politics. And that's why we are in a bicameral effort to introducing the Shareholder Protection Act. This legislation very simply gives shareholders a say whether a corporate general treasury fund is going to be used in political campaigns by first requiring corporations to receive authorization from shareholders to spend corporate funds for this purpose. Uh, this basic step will ensure that corporations' political activities adequately, uh, accurately, I should say, reflect the will of their shareholders. In addition, the board of directors must vote to authorize all expenditures that exceed $50,000 within the overall budget approved by shareholders. Individual board members' votes and the details of such approved expenditure will be disclosed online within 48 hours and be disclosed to the SEC on a quarterly basis. And we must be certain, at the very least, that if corporations are allowed to spend unlimited funds on elections, something that I personally oppose, but nonetheless we're dealing with the realities of the Supreme Court's decision, they are doing so only after their shareholders have had an opportunity to weigh in and that shareholders know how their money is being spent uh, and that giving the shareholders the opportunity to exercise, in essence, their free speech rights as well. It's legislation that I think we desperately need. I know, I can tell you firsthand, as the former chairman of the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee, uh, in the first election cycle in probably, I don't know, a generation uh, since the law was originally passed prohibiting federal dollars, I mean, uh, corporate dollars being spent in federal elections, that just against Senate Democrats alone, that was to the tune of 70, $75 million that was unlocked, and it was the mm -hmm. beginning of a process uh, that we faced uh, in the last cycle. And that's from what I can tell uh, in terms of reporting of how, what these entities spent money, uh, particularly on uh, cable, on television, on radio, uh, but there are all types of monies that are spent organizing and otherwise that are far more difficult to understand. So uh, it is, in my mind, fundamentally wrong that corporate entities, and particularly even those with foreign influence, can make decisions on U.S. policy, which is ultimately what elections are all about. It's not only who will be elected to those positions, but what those individuals will promote. And so I can see very easily, as someone who is trying to undo the $21 billion in tax breaks to the big five oil companies, how they would like to influence an election to ensure that those with my views are not around uh, and that those with their views to keep those corporate tax breaks stay. I can see it very easily how foreign entities could ultimately influence elections, particularly as I think about the exploration of oil and other purposes, uh, to make sure that our policies go a certain way, which policies would inure to their benefit. And the possibilities are endless. And so that's why we feel so strongly that if, in fact, this is going to happen, then at least shareholders deserve the right to know up front, to have a say on it, and to be able to vote on that. Let me introduce the House sponsor, then I'll turn to my Senate colleague and to Congresswoman Eshoo, uh, you know, for their comments, uh, but someone who I'm thrilled to have on the House side being a strong advocate of this uh, when he's in a fight. We were just kidding with each other here about New Jersey and, and Boston. Uh, we won't tell you what that was all about, but I, in any event, it's about baseball. About baseball. <laughs> well, that's New York and Boston, uh, uh, but in any event, uh, uh, Congressman Mike Capuano. Thanks, Bob. Uh, first of all, thank you all for being here. Uh, Bob said the substance, but to me, this is kind of simple. Uh, would anybody here object if I reached into your pocket and grabbed $100 and donated it to my favorite candidate? Because if 
you wouldn't object, please let me know your name and I will do that very thing. Bob will be getting some contributions and he'd be, be appreciative. That's what this is all about. Corporations belong to the shareholders. Simple. It's not about the Koch brothers. This is not about small corporations because most of them are owned by the corporation is owned. The shareholders are the people who make the decision. It's about whose money is it. Now, I don't like corporate money being in elections any more than anybody else. And I think that uh, everybody who donates and involved in, in, involves themselves in a campaign should be disclosed. Uh, look, we're playing the cards we get dealt. And the cards we get dealt is that for the first time in actually several generations, corporations can now participate in a major way. Most of them have not yet chosen to do so yet, but they could. And if they want to, that's fine. I don't have to like it, but it's just there's a lot of things in the world I don't like. This is one of the many. And okay. But let the people who own that money decide. If the corporations had done this before, you could argue, well, it's a normal co uh, cost of operating a business. Well, since they've never done it, it's a new cost. Therefore, if, they had, if this is a situation a couple of years ago, this money would be excess money available to pay dividends to shareholders. And therefore, the shareholders are really, in the real sense of the word, taking money out of their own pocket and choosing to allow the corporate leaders to make a decision to be politically involved which they are legally entitled to do. All this says is they actually get to say yes or no. We're bent over backwards not to make it uh, overly burdensome to the corporation. We had many different iterations of this over the last several years, getting the corporate shareholders to vote on every single donation, which of course became, would become a burden on any corporation. Uh, so we've cut it way back. Shareholders really only get one vote. One vote a year to say you allowed to set aside this part of money to have a voice. And then afterwards, they can make a decision the following year. Really, that's what all the disclosure is about, so that the following year, the shareholders can say, well, we generally agree or generally don't agree with what you decided to do, uh, and we will either do it again or not do it again. So this bill is actually, I think, very simple, very straightforward, focused on one aspect of the problem. Uh, and I think it uh, goes hand in hand with the most conservative ideals ever expressed. Don't touch my money. Let me decide how to spend my money. Uh, no one's ever really called me a conservative before, but I may as well take that mantle today. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Blumenthal, who, is, of course, you all know, is the Attorney General of Connecticut, and as such, uh, is a tremendous advocate uh, on this issue. We appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Mendez. Uh, and I want to thank Bob for his leadership in the Senate on this issue, having served so ably as the head of the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee. He knows, as he said firsthand, and I've learned very much firsthand the humongous, absolutely outrageous amounts of money that are spent these days on political campaigns. And thank you to our colleagues from the House as well for their leadership. Uh, it is very simple. It's about control and transparency. Shareholders should have not only a voice but a vote. And most important, Ordinary citizens ought to know what companies are doing so that shareholders and they as a public and as consumers can hold those companies accountable. It really is about accountability. We can't change Citizens United. It's the law of the land. No one wants to reverse <clears throat> the United States Supreme Court through this statute. But the disinfectant, that sunlight imposes is profoundly powerful. And that's what this legislation will do. Shine sunlight on practices and potential abuses. Nothing novel about requiring quarterly reports on these expenditures. Companies are required to disclose new marketing campaigns when they do a new type of toothpaste or a new brand of cereal. Why not when they support a candidate? Absolutely vital. Shareholders have a right to know. They should know. Companies should be held accountable. And the sunlight of this disclosure will change the balance of power when it comes to campaign spending because <coughs> the public will know who the corporations are supporting. Thank you. Congresswoman Escher is uh, one of the leaders on transparency issues, work with the White House and its uh, executive order, and we appreciate it very much. Thank you. Uh, to uh, uh, our former House colleague, we're always proud of you. To, uh, 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 to the new senator from Connecticut, I was uh, 
uh, chatting with him while we were waiting for uh, uh, Congress, I mean, uh, uh, Senator Menendez That's to right. come over, Same and uh, okay. I had to reestablish. <laughs> I had to reestablish my Connecticut roots because that's where I was born and raised. So that really pleased him, and of course, to uh, Congressman Mike Capuano um, is uh, is guts incorporated in the uh, House of Representatives, um, and thank you everyone for coming. Um, I think the issue of disclosure uh, is something that uh, goes right to the heart of our democracy. Uh, we know what the Citizens United uh, case uh, has opened up. We know what that landscape is, and it's not pretty. I think that, uh, uh, that people across the country uh, have responded uh, late last year in a, uh, uh, I believe it was a CBS uh, uh, poll, over 90% of the American people favored disclosure. This bill, where shareholders the stakeholders, the owners of a company, deserve to have a vote. Deserve to have a vote. And it's all around disclosure. People should know, they need to know, and when they know, they make an informed decision. I'd like to um, just uh, uh, share with you uh, a California experience. It was not um, uh, uh, at a shareholders meeting, uh, but it was the entire state of California in 2010, and it was Prop 23, where the oil companies had a huge campaign, uh, tens of millions of dollars spent. I mean, you couldn't turn your TV on morning, noon, or night without seeing these ads um, uh, about rolling back cafe standards. I don't need to get into the whatever of it, all the uh, into the weeds. But in California, disclosure is required. And so at the end of that ad, there was a voiceover that said, this ad was paid for by Valero Oil, such and such an oil company, such and such an oil company. I want to tell you something. There didn't need to be an opposition campaign <laughs> because once the voters knew who was paying for what, they made their decision. Now, I originated the idea of an executive order. I hope my colleagues don't mind my uh, advertising that. That is all about disclosure, that anyone that does business with the federal government, that they be required to disclose their political contributions. I think with public dollars comes public responsibility. And I'd also like to add that our Republican friends were for disclosure before they were against it. Let me read a quote to you of, um, of uh, 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 Senator McConnell from 2003. Why would a little disclosure be better than a lot of disclosure? So I think that we uh, make an important investment when we have a public policy in our country that there is an openness and a disclosure. This uh, does not infringe in any way constitutionally it simply means that the public knows in the case of companies and corporations that the shareholders be able to cast a vote in terms of doing business with the federal government that you simply disclose and people know they are public dollars so I'm very proud to be part of this effort uh, thank you uh, Mike for uh, carrying this uh, um, very important effort in the House. I'm proud to be a part of it, and I thank our Senate colleagues. Um, I think that this is one of the... We would really make a mark in the second decade of the 21st century if disclosure were the law of the land across the board. Thank you very, very much. <clears throat> Finally, uh, we have uh, Lisa Gilbert from Public Citizen. She is the Deputy Director of Public Citizen's Congress Watch Division and an advocate for government transparency and integrity in removing money from politics, financial reforms, and consumer protections, Lisa. Thanks. Well, thanks so much. It's wonderful to be here in such amazing company and on such a critical issue. Uh, since the members have covered their legislation in such detail, I'll just take a few minutes to share with the group some of the work that supportive organizations for this bill have been engaged in. Uh, many things have changed since the Citizens United decision first occurred more than a year ago. When the decision first came down, we all feared what would happen as a result. Now we know. 
Uh, following Citizens United, spending by outside groups funded largely by corporate interests exploded. Uh, outside groups spent more than four times as much money to influence the 2010 election cycle than they did in 2006, the previous midterm. Uh, and in fact, outside group spending in 2010 exceeded the outside spending in the 2008 presidential race. Uh, this is the first time ever that a midterm election eclipsed a general election when it comes to outside spending. Uh, and the ads that were funded by these unaccountable corporate interests fueled massive attacks, which truly shaped the election cycle. Uh, and still worse, we're pretty sure this was only a warm-up when we look at what's going to happen in 2012 as an Olympic-style sprint of corporate money and spending is about to begin. Uh, so due to this explosion, the list of organizations who are interested in doing something to expose corporate influence in our elections and bring new accountability to corporate behavior via your shareholder protections has grown hugely. Uh, we have a broad-based coalition of more than 75 organizations working on this effort. Uh, and the breadth of the coalition goes far beyond the traditional good government champions. We have environmental organizations, investment groups, pension funds, business groups, all interested in figuring out what to do to deal with the growing problem of corporate money in our elections. Uh, so just to speak quickly to the three things that the coalition has been doing to support the Shareholder Protection Act and other corporate governance work. Uh, so first, we focused on complementary state-level legislation to the representatives and senators' bill. Uh, secondly, we've worked at highlighting shareholder resolutions, which have been filed in iconic consumer companies, calling for shareholder protections. And we've also begun to press regulators to promulgate rules around these issues. As others have said here today, the Shareholder Protection Act is truly a critical step for adding accountability to corporate behavior around political spending. This legislation is a reasoned response, and it'll offset some of the terrible damage being caused by Citizens United. Uh, we applaud the members here today, as well as the other original co-sponsors who couldn't join us for introducing <coughs> such important and common sense legislation. Thank you, Lisa. With that, <clears throat> I'm sure my colleagues and I are happy to answer a few questions from the press, if there's anyone who has them. Yes. Just wanted to see if I could get a comment about the prospects for a vote in the Senate or the House on that. And also the administration, you mentioned the executive order. Anybody knows where that stands or other action by the administration? Well, uh, I won't speak for the House because, you know, they, they have a challenging issue. It's called the Rules Committee. Uh, and that always is a, a challenge for House members. But in the Senate, uh, you know, opportunities for amendments uh, on just about any given piece of legislation is always an opportunity. So uh, Senator Blumenthal and I and others will look for that opportunity at a propitious time where we can maximize our ability to actually get it passed. As to the executive order and House opportunities, I'll let my colleagues uh, respond to it. Well, as I said, the Republicans were for disclosure before they were against it. Uh, I've offered um, amendments um, uh, to, to uh, several bills now, and uh, the amendment has not been made in order. So it, um, uh, that uh, speaks volumes about uh, where the, uh, the House majority is. And um, uh, I can't tell you where the White House is. Uh, I, can, uh, I can tell you that uh, House members have organized uh, uh, in, a, in a broad sense uh, and uh, sent letters to the White House urging the president uh, to sign uh, the executive order. Do you have so, any response uh, on any of that? Uh, well, I think that they're pondering. Um, but uh, I, I, I think that this deserves a swift action and the American people would stand up and applause. I don't think this is a loser. This is a winner across the board, Republicans, Democrats, independents across the country. As I said, it doesn't pose any constitutional uh, barriers, raise any of those issues that other uh, undertakings uh, did and why it's so, uh, uh, you know, difficult to get uh, socks on this octopus of, uh, you know, campaign finance reform. So uh, I think that this would go a long way, both measures, uh, both. And I, I should add, uh, there are requirements of the uh, Securities and Exchange Commission today of uh, boards of directors for disclosure. So if anyone says that this is uh, burdensome and you can't do this or that with a company or a corporation, publicly held entities uh, are already required, um, or their board of directors are uh, on disclosure. And uh, so I think that uh, shareholders being able to have a vote is really uh, would uh, uh, complete the picture. For our Republican colleagues who have a general principle that people should have more 
be able to keep more money in their pocket. Uh, this is should this principle should follow. The shareholders should be able to make a, a decision as to how the corporation's monies, particularly for a political campaign, whether or not they should be spent in the first place. Because, as Mike Capuano said, uh, to the extent that a shareholders in a company decide that's not the appropriate use for the shareholders' monies, those would provide uh, greater resources for either a dividend and or you know, profit sharing and or building of that stock. So uh, it seems to me that their own views would follow being supportive of our legislation. I think uh, Senator Mendez is, is exactly right. But uh, also I would add, uh, you know, there are a lot of members of the corporate community who are deeply troubled about the mm -hmm. potential consequences yeah. of Citizen United. A number of corporate executives, members of <coughs> boards of directors, business people who are very, very disturbed and even dismayed about the possibility of vast sums of money, in effect, corrupting the political system. And they're troubled not only for what it means for their corporations, but also for other corporations that may create a kind of arms race mm -hmm. in spending by corporations. That's very true. I mean, you, we think about it, what, its corrosive effect upon our democracy and our elections. That's from our perspective. But from a corporate perspective, if you're a bigger gun than the gun below you, and you've got more to spend to have your views ultimately be the views that will take place in public policy, then that has a, con a consequence in terms of competitiveness on a whole host of other things. Senator, you're on the ballot next year, and right now you don't have an opponent. You've been raising money pretty steadily. I guess we'll see what you've reported for the second quarter that just ended. But why isn't this a way to keep somebody who might get into the race later, who doesn't have deep pockets, from being able to compete with you? Well, <laughs> I don't have deep pockets either. Uh, so, you know, my answer is we're operating under a system where there are limits, where there are absolute disclosure, where there's full transparency. Uh, and those limits, uh, as you know, are up to $5,000 for an individual. We're talking about tens of millions of dollars being spent by a corporation, should they choose to do so, to influence an election or a series of elections. Uh, and so that's fundamentally different. And there's no transparency, no accountability, no reporting. So no one knows. When people give me or any of us money for our campaigns, the whole world knows who is contributing to us. When these companies go and spend, no one knows why they are, who's spending, why they are spending, what's their purposes. As Congresswoman Eshoo said, the people in California clearly understood when they saw that it was the oil industry promoting the ads, they had a point of view. And they understood that point of view wasn't the point of view of the people of California. So it's a simple proposition. There's a fundamental difference. And, and by the way, if this bill were passed tomorrow, it would not prevent an opponent of any of us mm -hmm. from spending a dime, or a corporation from spending a dime. It would simply require disclosure and a vote by the shareholders. And could it be done to even affect the 2012 election? I mean, you have already in the third quarter of 2011. I mean, I don't know when annual meetings are. I mean, you know, like I, I, I would hope that while, you know, there is uh, a presidential election oncoming, the entire House of Representatives and a little over a third of the United States Senate up for election, that we could have this passed and done in time. Uh, and that is my hope because it's sort of like the Super Bowl for the nation at a critical time over the next well, Most uh, shareholders' years. meetings are in the fall, and whether we can pass it or not, by simply putting it on the table, it makes it a point of discussion within the individual corporation. There's nothing that prevents the corporation from having this sort of a bylaw right now. And even if whether we can get it passed or not passed by a, a shareholder meeting, uh, I would certainly encourage shareholders across the country to bring this issue up uh, when they go to the annual meeting and put it in front of their uh, fellow shareholders. Let them decide if they want to have their own corporation do it. There is nothing in the law that prevents the corporations from doing this now. As a matter of fact, uh, the New York Public Advocate has gotten several corporations to agree on their own to not participate in this. So there are other ways to do this. Uh, passing a law is one of them. Uh, speaking about the potential of passing a law, hopefully, uh, number one, enlightens other people of the possibility. Number two, uh, increases the pressure on those people who want to do the right thing. Uh, oh, number three, increases the pressure on those who want to do the wrong thing uh, <laughs> on occasion. So that there are many ways to accomplish this.
Senator, uh, yep. you mentioned several times that the bill would align with conservative philosophies. Have you spoken to any of your Republican colleagues about this bill? I haven't spoken about this bill specifically. I had spoken to some of my colleagues uh, when we were trying to deal with other forms of disclosure as it relates to Citizen United. Uh, for example, the disclosure of having a simple ad that is placed on the air, have those who back it be able to say, as I have to say as a candidate, when I put an ad on the air, I have to say, you know, this is Bob Menendez and I approve this message. Well, why shouldn't the CEO of X Corporation have to get on and say, uh, I'm so and so, and you know we approve this message and stand behind it. It's a simple disclosure element. Uh, they were not supportive of that, and so uh, you know uh, I hope that we can get as a minimum uh, colleagues who believe generally in transparency, say they believe in <coughs> transparency, to have transparency in a corporate setting and to have shareholders have a say. Uh, and we will certainly continue to elicit them to support the bill. Sometimes it's difficult to get some members of Congress to align their philosophical beliefs with reality. Uh, <laughs> thus far, I've had a little difficulty with that issue. In, in addition to this legislative approach, I, I think you all recognize that the Securities Exchange Commission could pursue a similar objective regulatorily. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, do you or any other members of Congress have any plans of asking the SEC to visit this issue? We've, we, I've already I asked them in yeah. the past. Mm -hmm. uh, but up until now, they've had their hands full with a minor little economic crisis. Uh, and uh, honestly, right now, I'm in the midst of trying to help the SEC defend itself against underfunding uh, from this Congress to make sure that they can do their job that they're required to do. Uh, this is one of the many things that I'd like to see them do as they move forward. Yeah. As a member of the Banking Committee, I've been pursuing this as well. And so uh, we have not gotten a commitment by the chair uh, or its members to actually pers promote a rule, but that does not mean that while we have not gotten, I have not gotten a commitment, doesn't mean that they have not shown interest. So we'll see. I'm, you know, want to continue to push them towards doing it. It seems to me they have the regulatory power to do it, mm -hmm. and it is a simple proposition. Uh, you know, we almost ended up in a crisis in this, well, we ended up in a crisis in this country on the verge of a new depression as a result in large part because of lack of transparency. And it seems to me that is a lesson that should be universal for all of us and be able to move forward even in elements like this. The point of our hey. coalition to work has been pressing the SEC to do this in addition to pushing for the legislation and they've given us indications they think it's within their purview to create rules like this. 